We just give me two shapes and a lamb's tail. Uh, let's see here. Here we go. All right. So where I thought we would start with some practice for chapter 21 is question 21.73, which just asks us to identify some reagents. So we're just asked to identify, identify reagents. Nothing more than that. The reagents that we would want to do each one of these transformations. So the first one is starting out with ethyl benzoate. So we draw the structure of ethyl benzoate and we covered ester nomenclature earlier on in the class. And then we want to take ethyl benzoate and we want to add some carbons to it so that we end up with a beta keto ester. So that looks like this. We have an ester on the far right hand side of the molecule. So here's our ester. Then we have the alpha carbon, the beta carbon. So this is a beta keto ester. And the way that we make a beta keto ester is by using the Claisen condensation. So I'm just gonna scribble that in here. This is the Claisen condensation reaction. And to do the Claisen condensation, if we're gonna add um, this piece onto the molecule, uh, we have to add these two carbons plus, of course, the ester over here. So what's the enolate that we would need to do this? Well, the enolate that we would need would look like this, where those would be the two carbons, the carbonyl carbon, plus we have the ethyl ester over here. And we would need to have our enolate looking like this, right? Because this enolate is going to attack the carbonyl, then we make our tetrahedral intermediate and we expel uh, the ethoxy group. Uh, as an ethoxide. Anyhow, so, you know, you might be asking, well, where do you get this compound from? Well, you could assume that you have that compound. That's one way of doing it. Or you could, you know, provide reagents to make that because all you'd have to do is start with ethyl acetate. I'm just going to write this down quickly here. All you would need is ethyl acetate and to treat that with um, LDA, so lithium diisopropyl amide, and that would give you that would give you the enolate that you need, okay? So that that's how you would make that compound. But again, if you just wanna write that you assume that you have that, I would say that's perfectly fine. Now remember, if you take this compound and you treat it with this enolate, you are not gonna end up with this compound because you have two acidic protons here that have a pK of about nine. And so the base that's remaining is going to rip one of those protons off and you're actually going to end up with this doubly stabilized enolate and that's why the second step so this would be the first step is this enolate and then the second step would be to treat it with aqueous acid to protonate and produce the beta keto ester so there's the Claisen condensation for this step now the next step and just bear with me here I'm going to erase this part we don't need that anymore get rid of that the next part is where we take this and we're going to make acetophenone so we're going to take this molecule and we're just going to convert it we're going to convert it into acetophenone so let's draw the structure of acetophenone and this is a decarboxylation reaction because we have to remove all of this here but the rationale that we use for going from this beta keto ester to acetophenone is that if we can hydrolyze this ester to the acid, what we're going to have, let me draw it in blue since it's an intermediate, I won't use the same color, we would end up with this intermediate where we have our, um, I'll just draw the carbonyl down like this, this is the way they do it in the book like this. So you end up doing the decarboxylation reaction like this, okay? And you end up losing CO2. You end up losing this carbon and these two oxygens in this process. Then you make an enolate, uh, or sorry, an enol, which tautomerizes in this case to give you acetophenone. So the conditions that you use to hydrolyze this and then uh, for to allow the decarboxylation to occur are just aqueous acid and heating that up. So just H3O plus and heat, and that gives you acetophenone. The next one is an aldol condensation, and it's a crossed aldol condensation because we're trying to take acetophenone, and we want to add a couple of carbons 
on the end of it. So we want to, we still have all of this part of the carbon skeleton, but then we want to add a carbon out here. So essentially all we're doing is we're making a double bond and we're only adding this carbon to the molecule. So you can see that this is a cross Claisen condensation because we're ending up with an alpha beta unsaturated ketone, right? This is the alpha carbon. This is the beta carbon. It's unsaturated. And this is a ketone, alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So there's a number of ways that you can do this. But I think it's uh, there's one of the skill builders in the textbook where it goes over, you know, how to select the proper aldehyde to do a cross to aldol condensation reaction. And the way that you would do this is you kind of imagine breaking this bond here and the carbonyl that you would need would have only one carbon and a double bond to oxygen. So that's formaldehyde that you would need to do your crossed aldol condensation. So what are the conditions for a crossed aldol condensation? Well, you'd need your aldehyde. I'll just rewrite it here. So you'd need formaldehyde and then you need sodium hydroxide. And since it's um, um, an aldol condensation, you have to heat it up, right? So it's not aldol addition, which produces a beta um, hydroxy ketone. Now we're making an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So we have to heat that up. All right, I'm gonna erase the formaldehyde so as not to cause any confusion. Next reaction, so let me just scroll down here. So the next reaction is taking this, and I'm gonna abbreviate the aromatic ring as just pH, just to make things a little bit simpler. So we still have the initial one, two, three carbons coming off of the aromatic ring. And then we want to add two more carbons. So these two carbons here, right? Essentially, we're just adding these two carbons and we're adding them to an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. And so this is going to be a Michael addition. So a Michael addition reaction, one of the most important reactions in organic chemistry, to some people anyway, Michael addition reaction. And how do we do a Michael addition? Well, we can't use an unstabilized uh, carbon ion because that's just going to attack the, car the carbonyl carbon and thus we need to use a cuprate. So we would use in this case since there's two carbons we would use ethyl cuprate. So ethyl cuprate. Same as the Gilman reagents that we saw earlier on in the course and then of course you have to add acid to that to form the enol which undergoes tautomerization back to the ketone. So a Michael addition. And then the last one is another uh, cross aldol condensation. So if we want to take this compound and we want to make want to make this compound, so we have all these carbons, one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, oops, one, two, three, four, five. And then we have the double bond down here like this. Again, the same rationale that we did up here. In fact, it's the exact same conditions. Right, we want to add those two carbons. So what would we need? We'd need to have a carbonyl with just one carbon. So that would be formaldehyde. And thus we need to have formaldehyde and we need sodium hydroxide and we need to heat that up, warm it up, Chris. And that's going to give you the alpha beta unsaturated ketone, another uh, alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So you can see that we employed the Claisen condensation and the Michael addition chemistry and we also did a decarboxylation here so decarboxylation which shows up in a few reactions in this chapter so just a little bit of providing reagents for a reaction and i wanted to take a step back and look at the problem before this one 21.72 because i thought it was uh sorry 21.72 i thought it was an interesting problem with a couple of solutions and this one involves another michael addition so if we wanted to take this compound which is three pentanone so if we draw three pentanone and then we want to make son of a gun okay so 21 21.72 and we want to take three pentanone this compound and we want to convert it to um three hexanone so one two three four five six so all we're doing is adding one carbon on the end like that. How would you do that? 
Well, the way that we would do that is by converting this compound into a Michael acceptor. If you convert that into an alpha beta unsaturated ketone like this, then you can use a cuprate to just add this one carbon, right? You would just treat it with, um, you know, methyl cuprate, so um, uh, dimethyl cuprate, so just like a Gilman reagent, and then you would treat it with acid to protonate to form the enol, which undergoes tautomerization to give you the ketone. So then the question becomes, well, how do you get from here to here? How do you make an alpha beta unsaturated ketone um, from an existing ketone? Well, that's one of the first reactions that's covered in chapter 21. It's a two-step process. The first step is alpha halogenation. So we do alpha halogenation. And for that, we need a catalytic amount of acid. So we need a catalytic amount of acid and bromine like that. And that's going to give us the alpha, or sorry, the alpha bromo ketone in this case. You could call it an alpha halo ketone, but the alpha bromo ketone. And then to do the elimination to form the double bond, there are several bases that you can choose. You could choose pyridine, you can choose lithium carbonate. Um, let's just put both of them. We'll put lithium carbonate or pyridine. Either one would work. They're both perfectly fine. And now you have a Michael acceptor. So this is a Michael, Michael acceptor. And in those videos, I covered all of the different Michael acceptors that you need to be aware of. And so now you would treat that with the dimethyl cuprate so go so we'll treat it with that and then in the second step we protonate to form the enol which tautomerizes to give the ketone however i would say and i'm not sure if this is covered in the solutions manual or not but there is another way to do this reaction there is another way to make this compound it might not be as elegant as using um, um a, a michael addition you know like using a michael addition so this is a Michael addition reaction. But I think there's another way to do it, and that would be to use the bear villiger reaction. So an alternative method would be to start with the same ketone. And what if you just treated that with um, a peroxy carboxylic acid, so peroxy acid, and then, you know, both of these sides are the same thing. So, you know, it doesn't even matter. You don't even have to worry about remembering migratory aptitude, and that's going to give you propanoic acid. And once you have the propanoic acid, well, then you can convert that to an acid chloride. Well, we looked at that many times in chapter 20, so you just use thionyl chloride to do that. And then once you have um, the acid chloride, you can convert that to the desired product. So you have one, two, three, and then one, two, three carbons over here. Well, how would you add these three carbons? All you need to use is the propyl version of a Gilman reagent. That's, you know, and then you're done. So um, you just use propyl, you know, the propyl cuprate, and you're done. So I'd say this would be an alternative method to it. So this is the um, bayer villiger reaction. So bayer villiger reaction. And then this one is a Gil using a Gilman reagent. It's a Gilman reagent. An alternative method. I guess it's just as elegant. I'm trying to think of which one would be better. I guess they both work. You know, there's there's nothing wrong with either of them. Uh, both are reasonable, I would say. All right. Let's move on and take a look at qu any question about that one. 21.72. And as always, don't hesitate to stop me if you have any questions at all. All right. All right. So let's move on from there. And I want to take a look at question 21.74, which is kind of a straightforward question. 21.74. Um, 21.74 just says, okay, if you have acetophenone, so if you have acetophenone, it says, start with acetophenone as your reagent and draw the product when acetophenone is treated with the following reagent. So in A, it's um, first sodium hydroxide, so sodium hydroxide, 
and then um, uh, followed by excess uh, sodium uh, sodium hydroxide and excess iodine. So we'll put here um, excess I two. So that's the iodo form reaction. And then in the second step, we're going to treat it with um, aqueous acid. So step two, we'll treat it with aqueous acid. Well, this first reaction, this is the halo form reaction. When you use iodine, you call this the iodo form reaction. So the iodo form reaction. Okay, so if we have CHCl3, that's chloroform. If you have CHBr3, that's bromoform. Bromoform. And if you have CH I3, this is iodoform. And the reason why the iodoform is such a popular reaction in organic chemistry is because it can be used to detect a methyl ketone. Um, if you do the iodoform reaction on a methyl ketone, it forms iodoform, and iodoform forms a yellow precipitate. So it's a dead giveaway that you've got a methyl ketone. All right, so what do we get after the iodoform reaction? I'll just try going this way. So after step one, we form the methyl group. But now instead of having three hydrogens, you have the carbon and it's attached to three iodines. And as you can imagine, this is a good leaving group because you have all the inductive effect of the three iodines pulling on the carbon. So what that means is when, when you treat it with aqueous acid in the second step, where's my you treat it with aqueous acid in the second step, and that just hydrolyzes the entire thing. So we go from acetophenone and we make benzoic acid. So that's a way to take a methyl ketone and convert it into a carboxylic acid, the iodoform reaction. The next one is dealing with um, alpha halogenation. So it says, what would happen if you took What would happen if you took acetophenone, so acetophenone, and then you were to treat that with acetic acid, so acetic acid, acetic acid, and bromine. Okay, acetic acid and bromine. And acetic acid is just a carboxylic acid. It's a weak acid. It's an organic acid. So that would be the same thing as just using a catalytic amount of acid. And these are the conditions that we need for alpha halogenation. Alpha halogenation. And of course, in this case, it's going to be alpha bromination since we're using bromine. And if the carbon adjacent to our carbonyl, if that's the alpha carbon, that's where, oops, that's where the bromine is going to go. So an alpha halogenation reaction. And the next one, so let me just open my book here. It says aqueous sodium hydroxide at elevated temperature. So that's going to be an aldol condensation reaction because we're heating it. Let's scribble that. To, oops. Let's scribble that down. Let's go here. So we've got 21, 21.74. See, so now we're taking the acetophenone and we're treating it with sodium hydroxide and we're heating it up. Okay, so these are the conditions for aldol condensation. Aldol condensation, like that. So we're doing an aldol condensation reaction. Well, there's a couple of ways you could do this. Okay, you can take the time to say, okay, well, I'm in sodium hydroxide. I'm going to have this um, enolate. So you could draw the enolate if you want. And then you could say, well, I'm also going to have the unprotonated form or the un, uh, or just the, the neutral form in solution. So I'm going to get the nucleophilic attack like this. You could take the time to draw that entire thing out. There's nothing wrong with that. However, I think there's a much simpler way to do that. And that is to just kind of connect the bonds. And I went over that in those reaction or in those lecture videos. So what you would do is this, is you draw one of the acetophenone molecules. Here's your alpha carbon. So again, this is your alpha carbon. And what you do is you draw a second molecule of the acetophenone and you point the oxygen of the carbonyl towards the alpha carbon. So let's draw a second molecule 
use my glue pen again, and we point the carbonyl like this. Okay, so let's draw a second molecule of acetophenone like this. And so where the bond is going to be formed will be right here between the alpha carbon and this carbon, which is the carbonyl uh, carbon in the other molecule of, the, of acetophenone. So after the loss of water, we're going to end up with this compound. So let's draw it carefully. We have our carbonyl and then our alpha carbon, and we're going to have a double bond. There's our methyl group, and then we're going to have our aromatic ring over here like that. And that's our aldol condensation product. So again, I go over that in the lecture videos. There's a skill builder that goes over, you know, how to how to do that effectively. Uh, let's try another one. This is question 2.78. It's another question where we just kind of rifle through a bunch of problems and see if we can solve, you know, kind of just providing reagents. So question 21.78. 21.78 is just another provide, provide the reagents, reagents. All right, so 21.78, 21.78A, we want to make this compound. So we're starting with cyclohexanone, and we want to do this, where we have, um, this would be what, two ethyl cyclohexanone? So we want to add an ethyl at this position. So this is just an alkylation at the alpha position. What is the base that we would use? Well, there's no thermodynamic product and there's no kinetic product to consider here at all. It doesn't matter. It's got nothing to do with the problem at all. Uh, and so the best choice would be to use a base like sodium hydride. So we have our alpha proton. Uh, I'll just draw in one of the alpha protons like this. We're going to treat this with sodium hydride. So we have sodium plus and hydride is our base. That's going to rip off this proton and give us the enolate. So here's our enolate, just like this. Okay, and then we're going to treat that with iodoethane, like this. And then we have an SN2 reaction like that. And that's going to give us 2-ethyl cyclohexanone. Now, the next one is a little more interesting because we want to start with our cyclohexanone. I'll have to go to a new slide or a new page here. So this is 21.78B. What if we want to take the cyclohexanone and we want to make an alkylation in the three position? So let's see here. If we have a three, let's see, they have a three ethyl. So a three ethyl um, cyclohexanone. Well, this is going to be another Michael addition. So how do we do a Michael addition? In order to do the Michael addition, we have to have the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. That means we need to have this compound. And if we have the alpha beta unsaturated ketone, then all we have to do is treat that with a cuprate. In this case, it would just be the ethyl cuprate followed by treatment with aqueous acid, of course. Scribble that in here like that. All right. So. How are we going to get from cyclohexanone to the alpha beta unsaturated ketone? Well, we saw that already today. If you go back a little bit, I can just remind you that we saw that reaction uh, right here, which is a two step process. First, we do an alpha halogenation, then we treat it with lithium carbonate or pyridine to make the Michael acceptor, the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So let's give that a shot. Where am I here? There we go. So why don't we just do it like this? We'll use a catalytic amount of acid that activates towards nucleophilic attack of the bromine. So we end up with this compound. So we end up with the alpha bromoketone. Then we treat that with pyridine or lithium carbonate. Um, let's just choose, I don't know, let's just choose pyridine this time. So pyridine. That's going to give us the alpha beta unsaturated ketone like this. And then it's just a Michael addition from here on out. So step one is to treat it with the ethyl cuprate. And step two is to treat it with aqueous acid like that. The next one is the reaction that's shown in the summary of reactions at the end of chapter 21. 
it's a pretty neat thing. It's also brought up in a couple of the practice problems. Uh, question 28 point, uh, sorry, 21.78C uh, says, okay, well, what if you want to add two alkyl groups? What if you want to have cyclohexanone and then you want to make you want to put a methyl group here, and what if you want to have an ethyl group here? Well, how would you do that? Well, in that case, what we want to do is we want to add one alkyl group and then the second alkyl group in succession. Has anybody give, given this one a shot? Did anybody try this one? Yeah, that was my chat open. There. Okay, so the best way to do this one is we have to do a Michael reaction if we want to add, you know, this ethyl group here. But remember, when you do the Michael reaction on the alpha beta unsaturated ketone, so let me go back. So first you need the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. But remember, when the, when the cuprate adds, you end up with the ethyl group here, but then you end up with an enolate, right? That, this is why you need to have acid in the second step. So if you have the enolate in the reaction mixture, that means that you can treat that enolate with iodomethane. So let's say you have some iodomethane like this, okay? It's just gonna alkylate, that's not a big arrow, like this to install the methyl group at this position. So it's kind of a two-step process all at one, not all in one pot. I mean, it's two individual steps, but it's kind of a, neat way to make two carbon-carbon bonds very quickly. So let's outline that. The first thing we need to do is make the Michael acceptor. We've done that already, so we'll save a little time. We'll say aqueous acid, just a catalytic amount, and bromine, followed by treatment with pyridine, and that gives us our Michael acceptor. Acceptor, which looks like this. Then, in the first step, we're going to treat this with the... Um, ethyl cuprate like this. And I'm just going to draw the intermediate. I doubt it has this all written out in the uh, solutions manual, but you're going to have, oops, oh, that's not very pretty. You have your et son of a gun. You have the ethyl group like this, and you have the enolate. So now when you treat this with iodomethane in the second step, I already drew the curved arrows, so you end up doing the alkylation like this. So it's a total of four steps, but you end up making two carbon-carbon bonds in the process. So a pretty fast way to make two carbon-carbon bonds. The next one is doing a Michael addition using a uh, ketone. And we don't think of a ketone as a Michael donor, but this is 21.78D, so D, where we start with cyclohexanone like this, and we want to take this compound. We have one, two, three, there we go, like this. So again, a, a ketone is not a Michael donor, okay? It, it is not a Michael donor, it isn't. If you have, let's say, a 1,3-dicarbonyl, yeah, if you deprotonate that, like this, that's a Michael donor, that's totally fine. But if you just put a negative charge here, like this, that is not a Michael donor, okay? So you need to convert the ketone into a Michael donor in order to add to, in this case, it would be this ketone that we would need is our alpha beta unsaturated ketone in order to make a bond right here because we're breaking this bond right here. So how do we convert cyclohexanone into a Michael donor? Well, the answer is the stork enamine synthesis, right? That's how we're going to have to do this. So we're going to use, um, we'll just write here, stork, stork enamine, enamine synthesis, synthesis, like that. Okay, so how do we do the stork enamine synthesis? Well, the first thing we do is we make an enamine. And we went over that in detail earlier on in the class. So we take dimethylamine, catalytic amount of acid, and we remove water. And that's going to make our enamine, which is going to look like this. So something like that. There we go. So there's our enamine. And the enamine is a Michael donor. So we'll put here Michael 
Ah, Michael Donor. Now that we have our Michael Donor, it can react with this Michael Acceptor. So let's write down the Michael Acceptor, which looks like this. And then we'll put it in one pair here. And you can see how this is just going to attack like this to give you the intermediate, which is going to look like this. So we end up with an iminium ion here. So we have an iminium ion here. Here's that carbon-carbon bond that we formed. And here is our enolate. So we end up with a molecule that's actually neutral. We have a positive and a negative charge. The charges balance out. And then all we have to do to convert both of those to the ketones is just treat it with aqueous acid. And that's going to hydrolyze the aminium to the ketone. It's going to convert this to the enol, which tautomerizes to give you the second ketone. So just aqueous acid, nothing more than that. So this is a perfect example of a storic enamine synthesis, which is how we convert a ketone into a Michael donor. All right, let's try another one here. Um, Let's try another storic enamine synthesis. They're pretty useful reactions. So this is 21.78. Let's see here, 21.78F. And for this one, we're going to take the cyclohexanone. Seems to be the favorite substrate, I guess, for this question. And we want to make another carbon-carbon bond to make this compound. So we have ester over here like this. And so you can see that we're making a bond right here. And what would be the Michael acceptor in this case? I'm kind of running out of space here, but hopefully you get my drift. That the Michael acceptor would just be this. This, the alpha beta unsaturated um, ester. So there's our Michael acceptor. And we need to convert this into a Michael donor. Well, how do we do that? The same way we did before, right? We're going to make an enamine. So this is another example of storic enamine. I'm not going to pencil that in. We're just going to convert it into the enamine. So we use dimethylamine, catalytic amount of acid, and then we're going to remove water. And we draw our enamine. It's the same one we had in the last question. So it looks like this. There we go, like that. This is our enamine. So this is going to be our Michael donor. And we draw in the Michael acceptor, which looks like this. So it looks something like that. And then we're going to treat that with aqueous acid in the end. And that's going to take us all the way to the final product, just like that. That's going to convert everything uh, to the, sorry, it's going to hydrolyze the aminium ion and it's going to end up um, producing the, um, the or generating the ketone. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, let's see here. Bear with me here, I'm finding another problem that I had highlighted here somewhere. Oh, I just had it. It's 21 point. It's 21.61. So 21.61, I thought I would go over this with you before we move on to something different. So 21.61, it just says, um, draw the products each of the following compounds is heated in the presence of base to give an aldol condensation. So this is aldol, aldol condensation chemistry. So um, in 21.61a, we're taking acetophenone, so this compound, and we're treating it with sodium hydroxide, and we're heating it up. That's going to be the same conditions that we're using for everything in here. So We'll put that one, and then why don't we pencil in the next one down here. It's a bigger compound. It's got all of these carbons in it, like this. Okay, so same thing, sodium hydroxide and heat. So when we're doing an aldol condensation, 
you can draw the whole mechanism, and I expect you to know how to draw the mechanism of aldol condensation so that it makes sense to you. And the easiest way to do these is just to look at the alpha carbon. So there's only one enolizable alpha carbon in either of these. You can't rip this proton off. There's no protons here. So this is the only alpha carbon where you can pull a proton off. And that's the one that's going to be, um, that's where deprotonation is going to occur to form an enolate. And then the enolate can attack another molecule of this. And then we end up getting the condensation happening. So we end up losing water in the process. But what's the fastest way to draw the product is to do something like this. So I'm going to write it below. You want to start by drawing your initial ketone like this. And then you just have to draw the molecule, the second, you know, a second molecule where you have the carbonyl pointed towards the alpha carbon. That's it. And then you can draw it in whatever orientation you want. I mean, we want to get, um, we usually make the, the E product, but you just end up drawing something like this. And so this is where the bond is going to be formed between this carbon and this carbon. That's where your double bond is going to be made. Now you can see that if I draw this out, I end up with the, um, I would end up with the, what would it be? I guess it would be the E product. So let's draw a product that we would get. So we have our aromatic ring like this. And then we're going to have our double bond like this. On this side, we've got our methyl group. And on this side, we have our aromatic ring, just like that. And just like that is done. That's all there is to it. Draw the aldol condensation product. You can try the same thing over here. We could just take this molecule. We can redraw it. We can even make it simpler. We can just draw a second copy of it here below. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, like this. And our double bond is going to be formed between the alpha carbon and the carbonyl carbon. So let's draw the final product. It's going to look something like this, like that. So then I have my double bond here. On this side, I have a proton. On this side, I have my one, two, or five carbons. There you go. So there's the product of the aldol condensation. Again, there's a skill builder in the book that goes over it, but this is what I think is the quickest way to do it. It's basically employing the exact same method that they use. So let's try another one. Let's try 21.61C. Uh, so let me just scroll down here. So this is 21.61C. Same old thing. Now we're going to take. Um, this compound, so like this, and same thing. We're going to treat it with sodium hydroxide. We're going to heat it. You know that it's an aldol condensation, and you could practice by drawing a second molecule of this aldehyde, like this. I'm just drawing it in a little bit different orientation, but it's easier to draw. And the double bond is going to be between the alpha carbon and the carbonyl carbon. Let's practice drawing the product, our aldol condensation, which is going to look like this. So we have the double bond here, the proton here, methylene, and there's our aromatic ring. And just like that, you can draw the product of an aldol condensation very quickly just by redrawing the ketone. And um, and uh, yeah, that's all we have to do. Let me try one more here with you. So let me find it here. Nope, that's not it. So here we go. Let's try another. Um, uh, let's try another aldol condensation. And this time we'll take a short break and you can give it a try on your own. See if you can draw the product of the aldol condensation. So this is, uh, I won't tell you which one it is, so we'll talk about it after. Give you a chance to try it on your own. So what would happen if we took this aldehyde and we treated it with sodium hydroxide and we heat it up, all right? So there's one that you could give a shot at, and then the other one, oops, is this one here. So here we go. 
this one. Same thing. If we treat that with sodium hydroxide and we heat it, see if you can draw the aldol condensation, condensation product using the same technique that I did in the other question. So we'll just take a short break. We'll take a 10-minute break, then we'll come back and we'll draw both of those products. <laughs> 